So today we're going to use uh, Houdini, in particular Flip and Pyro, to create this uh, sort of napalm effect. So we'll basically learn how to emit a flip fluid. We'll learn about collisions and also pyro ignition. And the tutorial is actually surprisingly simple. And I'm not going to do like a walk through. I'm going to start from scratch. Okay. So this is a flip particle emitter. So flip's basically a particle emitter, same as pop, but it just has like surface, it has a surface tension properties and stuff. So flip is particles. We detect a particle collision and then we put particles in a group to ignite using pyro. Okay. Let me just save this and I will start from scratch. Blah, blah, blah. Too many errors in this version. Okay. New project. Brand new. Okay. So let's create a, a box. And I'm just going to double click and let's adjust it slightly to make it more uh, more uh, like a grid. Okay, that'll do. And I'm just going to position it over here. Now let's give it some uh, divisions. So maybe 12. Collis uh, collider objects need to have some detail in it. Otherwise, you run into issues. I don't think the y-axis needs that many divisions. Actually, let's do let's do a 32 just to be on the safe side. Okay, I'm gonna control copy, so control C, control V, create another uh, box, and I'm just gonna rotate it. I believe control is snap. What's going on here? Okay, let's create a merge node, <clears throat> so we can actually see the two boxes. That's the thing about Houdini is uh, if you want to see uh, multiple objects at the same time, you kind of you have to merge them. So now using merge, we can kind of uh, we can adjust these. Uh... Okay, let me just push this back. Yep, out there. Uh, make it a bit lower, and okay, there we go. So that's our uh, collision object. So I'm just going to create a null. And I'm going to link it to the null, and I'm going to create. I'm going to call the null out call for collision. Okay, very simple. Let's create the flip emitter. So I'm just going to create a simple sphere, and let's make it much smaller. Let's move it back and up because it's going to shoot uh, towards the wall. Okay, so. Now in Houdini 19.5, uh, flip emission is quite easy. We just need a, usually three, but in this case, because we're doing collisions, we're going to need four flip nodes. So we just hit tab and type flip. We need the container, which is the initial setup. We need flip boundary, which is essentially the emitter. We need flip collide, so it can collide with objects. And we need a flip solver to do all the calculations and stuff. Very simple. You just simply link them. The first uh, three nodes pretty much always link like this. Two, three. And here in boundary, we're going to attach the sphere to the last uh, slot. And collide, we're going to attach here in the last slot. And if we just... Some kind of error. Why? Does it make sense? Oh, and uh, another thing you'll see just fixed itself for no reason. No idea. Okay, what you want to do is just... Um, so one thing you'll definitely want to do is just turn off simulation calculation. Because like every time you move something, it tries to recalculate it. It's highly annoying. Unless you have a quantum computer, it's just not going to be quick enough. So turn it off here. And then create a file cache and link it to the to the solver. And then here, just click load from disk and then save to disk. And then this way, we actually get to kind of decide when we do the calculation. Okay, so let's just play it back. And it's working very 
extremely crude, but it's working. So, first thing, uh, let's just adjust um, the particle scale. Oh, it used to be... Okay, I think we need to make a particle separation 0.3. And let's just recalculate. Just so we have like a sensible dimension, because this is way too small. Okay. Because I'm just going to reduce the frames down to a say 65. Because I'm actually on a laptop. If we play back now, yeah, I mean this is it's pretty still pretty massive particles, but at this stage it's uh, good enough to kind of set up the initial um, velocity and stuff. So the first thing we want to do is point the spray towards the wall. So that's the negative Z direction. So here in flip boundary, we have additional velo velocity, which is really useful. So we can basically emit uh, along negative Z, let's say negative six along Z. And that should cause it to spray towards the wall. Okay, so we have this uh, type of simulation. Okay, so next, um, what we're going to do is, Flip is basically a particle system. So I'm actually going to turn off in visualization all three of these uh, boxes, and that way we'll get uh, particles. I'm actually going to increase this slightly because it was a little too uh, slow during simulation. Okay, so I, tur so, um, I turned off the visualization, and we just get basically a simple particle system easier to kind of see what's happening. Okay, what we want to do next is we basically want to separate um, certain particles in a group. So basically the particles that make contact uh, with the floor, we want to put them in a, say, floor group. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, we could do some complicated object collision detection, but I'm just going to use simply the Y value. So if it's below a certain Y value, it's hit the floor. So how are we going to do that? So, this file cache is essentially the baked particles. If you hit information, you can see it has all the kind of typical particle system properties like age, life, you know, velocity, speed. And the one we're interested in is simply position. Now, I'm just going to create a point wrangle because flip is essentially a bunch of points. So we can actually manipulate these points. Um, I'm just going to write a few lines of code, very, very simple code, I promise. Um, if you want to get into Houdini, you can use VOPS, which is basically the visual programming language, um, but I just recommend you just learn to code, because uh, it's just learning simple if statements is just so useful in life. Like, um, I'm just going to show you now, it's very simple. So in the point wrangle, we're basically running an operation on every single point. It's essentially kind of like a for loop and any code you type here is going to be applied to every single point. So you actually have to be wary of that because sometimes you want code to just execute once. So let's say uh, we want to calculate, I don't know, the distance, uh, the surface area of uh, the wall. If you put that code in the point wrangle, it's going to do the same calculation um, like many, many times. It's going to calculate the surface area of the wall uh, for this particle, for this particle, like for up to, I don't know, 3,000 times it's going to do the same operation. So if you ever want to do like a one-off calculation, do a detail. But in this instance, we want uh, points. Okay, so we're going to write if at p.y, that's literally the y position of the point, all these points, is less than zero, close brackets, open curly brackets. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? Uh, at group underscore uh, hit floor equals one. Wasn't so hard, was it? So what this code does is at group is actually an intrinsic property. So if you type at group underscore something, it's gonna create this like Basically here is created a group called hit floor. And to make a particle a member of this group, uh, it has to equal one. And zero would be, it doesn't 
belong to that group. Uh, and the if statement simply if the y position of the particle dips below zero, put it in this hit floor group. And to see what's happening, we can create a color uh, node, link it to the point triangle, uh, make it red, and we don't want to apply it to everything, we just want to apply it to its floor. Ah, so now we can see particles below a certain uh, y, uh, what do you call it, y unit become red. Now that's a little too high, so let's lower it. So let's make it, um, you can actually create a slider, so I'm just going to highlight the zero and type chf, uh, just y val, basically like this. You see that? Just click away, click here, and it creates a slider. We can actually um, we can actually use a slider to define that position. Now I want to go minus, so I'm just going to click here to edit the range. Edit parameter interface, and there it is. I'm just going to click it. As you can see right now, the range is zero to one. Let's make it negative one to one. Okay. And uh, let me just drop it to the negative side and. Now we can see exactly what's happening. Yep, maybe a little lower. Oops. Say so like point. Actually, yeah, lower this side. Let me have a look. Okay. Let's see, just just a little lower. Yeah, there. Okay. So essentially, it looks like um, we're isolating the particles that are uh, hitting the floor. And they're going to ignite because, I don't know, there's like fuel on the floor. <laughs> so, let's now link Flip to Pyro. Okay? So let's just put this aside. Don't worry about it. And now Pyro, you can get some ama amazing explosions. And you just have to remember just a few small things to do a successful Pyro setup. So for Pyro, we need a Pyro source essential. We need, strangely, a volume rasterize attribute, this one, and finally a pyro solver. Now, with these uh, three nodes, you can pretty much create most uh, explosion effects. Not very difficult, was it? Now, in the pyro source, we're going to link a bunch of points. Can you guess which points? Yes, the points from the flip simulation. So let me just grab this and wire it right here, okay? And we're not going to see anything yet until we link it to volume rasterize attributes. And now here's the tricky bit. In order to create um, a fireball, you're going to need to initialize burn and smoke. You'll notice that created uh, three attributes. These are critical. You need minimum these attributes. Density, so the explosion has some kind of body. Temperature, so we know how hot it is. So basically that would mean if the temperature is low, it's just smoke. And then if the temperature is high, then it maybe begins to ignite into fire. Now, if you don't have burn, you're not going to see any fire, you're just going to see smoke. So add burn also, and Houdini's made it simple, you just initialize source burn, and then again, and again initialize source smoke, that's it. Now here in volume, rasterize attributes, again we're not going to see anything till here in attributes we add burn, density, temperature, the trio. We need these three to create any significant effect. Let's play that back. And, yay, look, the flips looks very crude. Don't worry about it right now. But, uh, yeah, we linked it to flip. Now, remember we created a hit floor group. So go back to pyro source, where it says group. Usually you get a drop down, but uh, I guess we have to type it manually. There you go. Only the particles we defined are igniting. Now, particle separation, let's just reduce it slightly, because the effect is 
very crude voxel size, just make it uh, and just reduce the scale. Let's see what that looks like. Bit better. To be honest, you're not going to see anything till you link it to Pyro Solver. And because we turned off dynamics, we're not going to see anything. So again, we create a cache. File cache, link that. Select load from disk. <gasps> there we go. I can see something is already brewing. Boom. Oh, okay. Switch to a fire. It's actually working. Now, all we need now, so we created the basic uh, system. Let's just make the fire look a bit better. So you need to reduce the voxel size down to say 0 0.06. Depends on the scale. Uh, we could increase sub-steps, max sub-steps to two. Here in bounds, uh, we can actually limit the maximum size. It helps us uh, speed up the simulation, but it's going to cut off. So let's just say 555, five, five. and that's fine, because you just want to see the body of the simulation. Now in the collision tab, let me just open this up. Uh, collision voxel size, Not, we don't need anything here. Sourcing, as you can see, the density, temperature, burn, and velocity is already pre-added. If it wasn't added, you probably wouldn't see anything, but Houdini is smart enough, it's added it. Now, I always find that the dissipation here in fields is too high. So I'm just going to make that 0 0.02. And I'm going to increase the cooling rate. And then shape is a fun little uh, tab. You can basically add wind. We're going to add disturbance, turbulence, shredding. And that will... Let's actually see what that just did. Save the disk to re-render. And yeah, it looks a lot more sophisticated. Still kind of rising a little too much. I think I maybe messed up the cooling rate. Uh, buoyancy, actually, that's the one. It's way too buoyant. Let's make that point two. Uh, I think shredding's fine. Uh, here you can even uh, kind of adjust the intensity. You have to be on the pyro solver node to see the changes. Okay. Now, what I usually do is I kind of separate out the smoke into a separate layer. Um, essentially, I just um, copy these three like that. And then here in volume, rasterize, um, I choose, uh, I believe it's burn. For coverage, instead of density, sorry. I think it's temperature and you just get smoke there's one of them anyway uh, i'm just gonna save the disc here oh look at that actually what the hell is that that's sexy as hell but it's not what we're looking for very interesting yeah i think it was a uh, burn let's re-render okay i think yeah there you go just a pure smoke Look at that beautiful smoke. Now, I did it kind of a hacky way. For some reason, here back in volume rasterize attributes, if you choose coverage attribute burn, you get pure smoke. And here, when you choose density, you get pure fire. So let's do a merge node. I'm just gonna merge. Let's call this flames. Let's call this smoke. Okay, and once you render, that's it. The work's done, it's baked. And let's just get the collision object in here so we can see everything. And so let's just play that back. Yeah, it's maybe a little too, uh, <laughs> this time uh, the platform was a little too small, but it's colliding accurately. Doesn't look as good as one uh, in the intro, but I'll let you tweak it from here. Otherwise, you know, the whole tweaking thing, the tutorial runs into hours. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you next lesson.